Today is part two of, I guess you would call it, my Wayland initial impression series. The last episode I focused on WR Roots Wayland, and today we're going to be talking about Sway. Now, if you don't know what Sway is, Sway is what is known as a Wayland compositing window manager. This is based on the WR Roots library, like how something like Gnome is based on LibMutter and KDE is based on... Kwin. Basically, it's a compositor and a window manager baked into one single package, unlike over on Xorg, where you would run a separate window manager compositor, let's say something like Awesome and PyCom, for example. Now, Sway is a really interesting case, because it's very, very heavily inspired by i3 gaps. Not the base version of i3, which is an improvement, because I like having gaps here. And by inspired by i3 gaps, I literally mean the config is a superset. If you want to take your i3 config and then just run it on Sway, that'll work just fine. For me, that's interesting because back when I first started using Linux, my absolute first window manager was i3. This isn't a perfect replica. There are certain things that have been changed, but overall, it feels very, very comfy. Now, having a merged compositor and window manager is a really weird Wayland design decision, which in certain cases works relatively well. In the Sway case, though, it feels really, really limiting. So what does the compositor support? It supports window gaps. I don't even know if that's part of the compositor. It supports transparency. It supports transparency. That's basically it. If you want to do things like window flares, you want to have some window blur, you want to have rounded corners, you want to have transitions or anything like that, Sway is not going to let you do that. And it's not part of the goals of Sway, so I don't expect it to ever be there. And don't get me wrong, it's totally fine if the Sway devs don't want to focus on all of these extra fancy things and want to instead focus on just making Sway as solid as possible. The issue I have, though, is that because of the way this is designed, if you want to be using Sway, you are forced to use the Sway compositor. I have no idea if this is possible with WR Roots, but I really hope that some point into the future, compositors and window managers are re-separated like they are over on Xorg. I totally get why they're connected. It makes it much, much easier to have, you know, forced V-Sync to eliminate all screen tearing, but it does give users a lot of limitation and makes them make choices that really don't make any sense and you would never have to make those over on Xorg. Speaking of things I hope change, Sway, at least from my experience with an AMD GPU and an AMD CPU, is a little bit unstable. I don't know why. A couple of times I've been just going through my desktop and it's completely locked up, like completely froze and just sat there. I waited for five or so minutes and nothing happened. Ultimately, I just rebooted my system and everything was fine. This happened maybe, I think, three or four times during the time I've been testing out Sway. And I've done a bit of research on this, and other people seem to say occasionally Sway is a little bit crashy. It's not enough where it's unusable, but it's certainly a lot more than I've seen over on Xorg. That's enough for the bad stuff. Let's talk about some of the good stuff. And one of the good things is multi-monitor support. Over on Xorg, getting multiple monitors working is perfectly fine. When you start introducing things like mixed refresh rates, I have one monitor that runs at 165 hertz and the rest of them run at 60. Getting that working is a little bit finicky. On Sway though, it literally couldn't be easier. It's one line, it works every single time, and I've never had to mess with it. So if we go and run Sway message, dash t and then get underscore outputs basically this serves the same purpose as something like xrander from here you can go and find out what each of your monitors are called and find out information about them but the main thing is what the monitor names are and what they are capable of and then to get our monitors working it's really really easy we go into our sway config inside of our dot config folder inside of the sway folder inside of the config file and then just add a couple of lines. For each of the monitors we have, we add an output line. So output dp-1, that is for my main monitor. dp2 is my second monitor. And then HDMI A1 is the monitor with my script on it. 
we can then set the position, set the resolution we want to run at, and the refresh rate if we want to go and change that. In these cases here, they automatically pick 60 hertz, but being above 60 hertz, the main one, I think defaulted to 120. So we can go and set that to 165, set the positions, and reload the config. Everything just works. At some point in the future, I'll do a dedicated video on configuring outputs, all the fun options that are available. But for now, this is basically all you need to know to get your outputs in the right order and displaying at the right resolution and frame rate. While we're here, actually, I mentioned earlier the config file is basically i3. So if you want to start up applications, you can use the exec command and then whatever application you want to run. If you want to go and make some key bindings, you can use the bind sim command and everything else is fairly, fairly similar to i3. In fact, it's so similar that in many cases, you can just read the i3 documentation and work out most of what you need to know. The only things you need to look at for the Sway-specific documentation is things that obviously weren't available in i3. Things like, say, configuring your outputs. Even configuring things like the default bar Sway bar is done in a fairly similar way to configuring i3 bar over on i3. This is so similar that you can even go and take your i3 bar, something like i3 blocks or poly bar, and run it through X Wayland and use it inside of Sway. I wouldn't recommend doing that. There are plenty of Wayland native bars, but if you really want to do that and you don't want to go and replace any of your configuration, that's an option. There's a slight configuration bug though. A lot of the visual configuration, things like your gap size or the width of your borders or the border colors and things like that, if we go and modify them and then reload the config, it doesn't actually apply the effect, but it really does. It just doesn't apply it on any desktops or any workspaces that you've already used. Over on the second one, the gaps have been applied. So whenever you modify things like that, it's probably best to just go and restart Sway. For the most part, the bindings are basically i3 bindings as well, with one very important exception. It doesn't use the shifted Vim keys, where on i3 it was something like J, K, L, and colon, or something like that. In this case, it's H, J, K, and L. Right now, the intention is to be a drop-in replacement for i3. Going into the future, there is no guarantee that is always going to be the case. So make sure you do go and read the config file. Maybe at some point, i3 adds a feature where the Sway devs think that really doesn't make any sense and don't bother including it. Or maybe the Sway devs add something which sort of overlaps something in i3. But right now, in April 6th, 2022, the config is going to be fully compatible. One thing that some people are a fan of is having scratch pad functionality. Basically having a window that you can show and hide basically at will, so you don't have to go and reopen it whenever you need it. So let's say I have something like a Vim window open. I might want to take some notes or something like that, but I don't want to have it on my screen all the time. If I go and do mod shift minus, in my case mod being the super key, it's going to go and hide that window, but the window hasn't been closed. If I now go and press mod minus, it brings back the window in a floating state with whatever I had open. But you don't just have to have one scratch pad, you can have basically as many as you want. Let's go and open up a new window and let's go and open up LF. Go and press mod shift minus, it will hide that window. Pressing mod minus is going to bring back the first window, pressing it again is going to hide it, but then pressing it again is going to bring out the second window. For what I typically do on my system, a terminal makes the most sense, but it doesn't just have to be a terminal. Basically, any application on your system is going to work. Some applications might not play nicely with being minimized, but anything besides those is going to be fine. So let's open up a browser window, do the exact same thing again. If we now go through the list, there we go. Browser is back. One thing the Sway devs didn't need to do, but is very appreciated, especially as someone trying to make videos on this, is the i3 migration guide. Basically, showing you applications you would commonly use over on i3, which you would commonly use on most other window managers, and then the alternative you could use over on Sway if you want a native Wayland experience. So things like don't use X Backlight, use Light instead. Don't use X Banish, there's actually a built-in inside of Sway to do the same thing. Don't use X Render, you can use WLR Render instead, or the output command inside of Sway. 
And there's a bunch of other applications in here as well. The TLDR is if you like i3 or i3 gaps and you want to try out Wayland, this is probably the easiest transition you're going to find. Everything just feels like i3. There are some extra things you can configure, but you don't really have to. You can just leave them as their defaults and just use it like you're using i3 on Xorg, except some applications, specifically the X configuration software, will have to be swapped out. But besides that, it's a very similar experience. The problem, though, is Wayland itself. Let's just imagine that Wayland didn't exist and Sway instead was a drop-in replacement for i3, but over on Xorg. Besides the built-in compositor and the occasional crashing, which might be related to the WR Roots base, I would have a really, really hard time not recommending this. It does basically everything i3 does and does it basically as well. It's really, really good. But the Wayland user experience, specifically the WR Roots experience, really holds it back. Whether it's the global hotkeys I talked about or anything like that in my first video, it really makes it hard for me to suggest actually using Sway. But as I said in the first video, I'm going to keep using Sway, I'm going to keep using Wayland, and I'm going to keep making videos on this and explaining things that can make the experience somewhat better. And as things do improve, things like at some point hotkeys being handled through XDG portals. When those things happen, the experience will be really, really good. And that's going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you used Sway before, let me know if you think these are fair points. And if you've never used Sway, let me know if you're going to go and try it out now. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of... Right, I can't do that. I have to go and manually click it. One of... These amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon subscribers there in the bearer pay link in the description down below. Uh, I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robs and Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. Now to click the stop recording button.